Hi guys, so this is just a tutorial on something that my students ask me about a lot. I have an example one hanging on a free time activity board, but they don't always know exactly what those instructions are asking them to do to complete this. So this is just a little homemade paper wheel, or pinwheel, um, paper pinwheel, sorry, my tongue is weird today. Um, but what's gonna end up happening is this is not gonna be a store-bought quality kind of a thing, so it is not gonna be perfect. Different people use different items to complete this. I'm going to use a straw with a hole punched into it. If you don't have a hole punch, if you bend that straw in half and you give a little clip on the corners, most of the time that's enough of a hole to get things through. I'm also going to be using a brass fastener. This is not the most perfect material, but this is what we have available in my art room. So this is a three quarter inch long brass fastener. It kind of looks like a little golden nail. It's made out of brass, which is a very soft metal that you can bend. And the reason for that is that it has two legs on the bottom of it that you can bend out. And basically it holds it tight so that things don't move out once they're, they're pushed through. So this is going to be basically what makes our pinwheel spin. In order to start the pinwheel, what you're going to need is you're going to need a square piece of paper. Now, this is just a regular computer paper where one side is 11 inches and the other side is eight and a half. So in order to get a square piece of paper, we're going to need this short side on this side to make sure that these sides are all the same, which is the definition of a square. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do here, and I have a lot of kids who try and do this and go, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Well, no, because you have it in the wrong place. So what you want to do is you want to touch the short side to the long side. So what I like to teach my kids to do is to bend the paper over, and it's a good two or three fingers above the paper so that... I can show you the shadow on it, underneath it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this and roll it with my hand. And basically that gives me control to put that in any place that I want. So I'm gonna roll this over until this side is right up against that side. So it's going to be flush, which basically needs edge to edge right up close. And I'm gonna make sure that's in the right spot. And then I'm gonna take my thumb and very calmly and carefully I'm going to push down on it from the middle out in both directions to make a nice sharp fold. So when I open this up this side is going to be the same as that side except that we have this little extra here. This is what extra length makes that a rectangle instead of a uh, square. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut that off. If you don't have a pair of scissors or you happen to be somebody who's practiced at this um, if you happen to have a, sharp, a table with a sharp edge on it, not a rounded edge, but a sharper edge, you can actually line that up and rip it. Sometimes that paper rips nicely, sometimes it doesn't. It takes a little practice. If you're not sure of yourself, I would definitely use a pair of scissors. So when I open this up, now that I have that trimmed, this side is the same length as this side, which means these two are the same. So all four are the same. Basically, we've got a square now. I've got a diagonal line already from one corner to another. So I need another one that makes an X across corner to corner in both directions. So same thing again, I'm gonna take that paper, I'm gonna roll it, pull it, shove it into place, put it where I want it, make sure the corners line up, hold that down. And then I'm gonna take my finger from the middle and give a nice sharp fold in the middle from there. Open that back up. So now I have this X shape pattern. Basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut on those lines to a certain point. So let me take a marker and just mark and show you exactly where you're gonna to need to know. So this is gonna be my middle. That's gonna be where everything pivots around and turns. I'm going to put a mark right about there. So when I'm teaching kindergarten to cut and how to cut, I have to teach them how to stop and how to basically come to a stop and make their ends or cuts end where they want them to. So about an inch out, which is about one adult knuckle. Um, it really doesn't matter how big that is, as long as it's kind of sort of in the same ballpark. So basically, I'm going to take my scissors and cut right on these lines. You do not have to mark these with a marker if you don't so wish. I'm doing this basically so you can see the pattern on camera. If you wish to put the marks on with a marker or a pencil, that's perfectly fine. Um, sometimes I get a little bit lost when I'm cutting and I accidentally cut too far. And if you make a little too much of a cut, just remember that this is paper. That's super easy to fix. If you have a piece of tape, all you've got to do is tape it. And if you need to recut a little bit of that tape because you tape too much, you tape too much. This is a homemade thing. So all those little tiny mistakes are a little bit more charming than they are a problem. All right, so up to that line. So now I've got this really weird 
diamond triangle kind of square thing going on. This is going to be my center. So what I'm going to do here, since I'm using a brass fastener, I'm going to come from the back. I'm going to poke it right through the middle. So what that does is that gives me something to poke out all these papers onto. Every other corner is going to go on here. So on this triangle, one corner is going to be poked through and the other corner is going to stay. It does not matter whether you grab this corner or this corner, as long as you are the same thing on each one. And it seems like that would be a hard thing to do, except once you get started, you'll know exactly which one to grab. So I'm going to grab these ones just because I'm right handed and that one's the most comfy for me. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to basically poke that one right through. Now you can see that creates a little flopped tunnel. That's what catches your wind and pushes your pinwheel. So I'm going to leave this one alone because I don't want to close that off. If you wanted to make a flower, maybe that could be a way to make a flower. But I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to get the next one and poke that through just about the same place. I'm going to leave a little extra paper so that it, if it accidentally tears. It's got a little bit of give. So this one gets skipped. This next one on the neighbor triangle gets picked. Stab that through. This one gets skipped. This one's going to get stabbed through on top. Right there. And then all I've got to do is take the straw. And since I already have the hole in it, I'm just going to slide that over the brass fastener. And I'm going to open those up so that they are braced and it does not pull through on its own. And that's basically my homemade pinwheel. Now you're going to see that this is on one side. The straw is on the other because of the way I planned it. Um, you can change that out if you need to. So I can see already that if I hold this up, this one might be catching. I can't test this on camera because there's not enough space for me to blow it in for you to see. But I've seen some of these things where my students are making them and they catch in different places or they tell me it's not working. Well, remember, this is a homemade thing. So you're going to have to troubleshoot, which means you're going to have to take a look at it and see what's not working. Because I'm holding it upside down, it's spinning OK right here. But maybe when I hold it up this way, it won't. So I would want to blow in this side to catch it and push it the opposite direction to make it spin. If it's not spinning, sometimes what you can do one of the things you can try and fix is that you can take this if you're using a brass fastener and you can flip flop it. So you can see that these legs are on this side and the head of it is over here. I'm going to reverse that. So I'm just going to take that, put it back through the hole the other way and see if that would work any better and give that a test and see if that test runs any better. If that test doesn't run any better, maybe I flip back and I try a different thing that might be wrong with it. Maybe this is too tight. Maybe I have something else that's in the way of things that's not working quite right. So if I'm blowing on this, it should tell me whether or not it's going to spin. Now this one looks like it's going to spin pretty well just by me moving it with my hands. So it looks like it's okay, but it might catch. That's going to be something that you're going to have to troubleshoot. So that is a basic paper pinwheel. Of course, there are lots of variations and ways to do it, but that's just the basic idea of how a pinwheel is put together. If you have any questions or any suggestions for other materials that you could use, please leave them in the comments and maybe somebody can get some ideas from you too.